It's a bull. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. And I guess you just saw the beach Zamboni go by. <laughs> That's what I call it. It picks up all the seaweed and stuff there. Uh, beautiful day out there, man. It's like 67 degrees or something. Uh, take a look at that. Just lovely blue skies, little uh, cotton balls out there in the distance. And uh, what a great day to be outside. But I am working today. I am actually so short-staffed, you wouldn't believe it. I will be working by myself, basically, today. Boy, that's a scary thought. <laughs> well, hey, listen, I'd like to thank everybody yesterday for uh, their kind wishes with my father. Um, you know, I'm a second-generation dealer. I learned this from my father. I started my own place a long time ago, and we're really not connected in a business way, but, uh, you know, we're very close. In fact, we became closer after I started working, stopped working for him. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's tough working with family, but uh, uh, my father had a medical emergency and uh, we ended up getting him to the hospital just in time, I think. Um, he had to have a couple uh, transfusions and stuff, so it was serious. It's definitely serious, uh, but he's stable right now and uh, um, we're happy and everything and hopefully they'll, uh, they'll find out what is causing it and um, hopefully we can fix it. But no less, you know, it kind of reminds me, I've been thinking about this for a long time, and this is a Precious Metal shows, but uh, Precious Metal show and... Uh, um, talking about personal stuff, but no less. Uh, just wanted to apologize for getting the show out late. And I know, you know, I shouldn't have to apologize for family, and I'm really not. But, you know, I, one of the things is I'm very, very uh, proud of the fact that I have not missed a, uh, a single day. And it's not going to say it's not going to happen, but I have not missed a single day in almost two years now doing this uh, every day except for uh, official holidays. Uh, date my, I've even done it on my vacation time, which has been very short. <laughs> but, uh, back to what I was talking about here so we can move along to today's report, which is interesting, man. I think we're, uh, uh, we're looking good here, folks. We'll see what happens. But love your parents uh, because we're so busy growing up often that uh, we forget they're growing old, too. And i got to tell you, I probably did that for a period of time. Forgot, didn't forget about my parents, but you kind of get so focused on your life. that, uh, And, you know, and, and family can be a little bit trying at times as well. Also. Uh, yeah, but, you know, you don't start to realize that until you get older and you start to see the people around you start to disappear, whether it's family or friends and things. And a lot of uh, you, you, you folks that are older than me, I'm uh, slightly higher than middle age right now, but all you older folks out there than myself, uh, you understand this for sure. And uh, you younger folks, uh, you will at some point. And, and appreciate what you got right now, that's for sure. Well, let's take a look at spot prices here. Uh, oh, and again, thank you for all the uh, kind words yesterday. I really appreciate it, folks. I really do. Um, it's, uh, it was sincerely heartfelt. Uh, let's take a look at spot prices here and see what we're doing. And I'm going to do a quick refresh here. Of course, the CPI numbers have come in already at 830. I've been kind of following that pretty closely. Uh, currently 829, uh, down about four bucks, but not too much. Uh, the low of 1823.83 and a high of 1837. Uh, we'll take a look at the 24-hour charts here and see if there was any uh, monkey hammering to the downside this morning or last night. I suspect there was. Uh, and I've got a kind of interesting point that both of these markets are like moving in tandem if you overlaid the lines with each other it's not to me that's real suspicious but let's uh, take a look at silver prices here 2320 and a high of 2350 silver is looking pretty strong uh, but as I uh, kind of alluded to this week, it really depended on the CPI, how the CPI came in. And uh, this is kind of playing out currently, uh, even though gold is down slightly. Uh, platinum at 1,030, 96. Uh, again, about uh, a range of 1,019 to 1,038. So it's hanging on to that $1,000 mark in palladium I talk about, but uh, we don't sell much of it, so what's the point? Uh, let's take a look at the charts here and see where we are. Uh, gold charts, and I want you to—I uh, uh, sh want to show you something here that I find interesting. Well, it, at least it was interesting early this morning. But here's your 24-hour gold spot price. Take a look at this. There is your eight. I bet you that's about 8:30. See that right there when New York Crimex opens? There's your 8:30, and uh, uh, boom, down. And there's the uh, there's a the slingshot, man. And in fact, the slingshot didn't just revert to its. Uh, uh, norm there. The slingshot just, <laughs> it actually shot something out. But we're backed off a little bit here and sideways in the markets. But take a look at that. Look at uh, 1837 or 38. 
Uh, there you go. And again, in what market? The Crimex market, of course. I think the higher CPI print uh, kind of screwed up the uh, monkey hammers, <laughs> you know, the big commercial banks that monkey hammer these markets uh, in the Crimex markets. Uh, I think uh, the higher CPA, CPI rate is not helping them at all. Uh, let's take a look at gold, too. I mean, silver, and uh, take a look at the similarities. I want to show you something. Silver, the, I mean, look at this. They're two different metals. I, I, I've always said I agree that they should kind of work hand in hand in some ways. You know, where gold goes, silver follows. But to where you could almost overlap these lines, I mean, that just doesn't, and this has been happening for quite some time. It's almost like a paired concentrated effort on both metals at the exact same time. Look, I mean, normally, I mean, I won't say normally, but, the, you know, when I see this, it just kind of tells me that uh, there's something going on in the background. The metal should, even though they, the gold and silver kind of work in tandem with each other, and remember what I told you silver guys out there, gold will, silver will always follow the lead of gold, but, I mean, it's just too, you could lay that on top of the gold line right there and it'd almost be identical. I don't, that shouldn't really happen in my opinion. I mean, uh, uh, who trades these metals in tandem exactly at the same time? Uh, and especially when you look at patterns like that, a lot of suspicious monkey hammering bullshit going on out there. How's that? I threw three words at you. So, <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's get over that real quick because, you know, we all follow the gold prices. I don't want to dwell on that too long. But look at this. Uh, this morning I was seeing the market was up a couple hundred points. Uh, I guess the plunge protection team is going to come in and save the day by buying stocks equities, keeping the uh, Dow, SP, and NASDAQ uh, somewhat buoyed uh, so we don't have 1,000 and 1,500 point down days. And believe me, I honestly believe, this is my opinion, my conspiracy, and it could very well be right, uh, especially if you uh, start reading about what the plunge protection team does and what, you know, that's the presidential working group. They work with the Treasury Department, the President works with the Treasury Department, and also the Federal Reserve, uh, and they then they were actually made, think about the name, plunge protection team, people. PT. They were made for events like this, and I have no doubt, and anyone who thinks that these markets are organic and these markets aren't monkey hammered as well, think about the PPT if they're in there buying equities just to keep this market propped up, right? How, how much of a free marketplace is that, folks? All right, and, and the reason I say that, because we know that they, uh, we know that COMEX uh, allows the uh, big commercial banks to cheat the little guys uh, out there. And uh, so, I mean, it's obviously got to be happening as well in the big equity markets, uh, even to a larger scale. But down, 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 uh, Dow's futures were about 200 and something points down a little further, uh, which tells me, again, two, two or 300 after the CPI report, I'm looking that these were in the red, not so much on the S&P, I forget what it was, but they were down about 100 points more than this at least, okay? Um, and then all of a sudden you see this kind of slight reversal. And you start to wonder, is that intervention, is the Fed, is the uh, uh, government intervening in these markets to slowly let the bubble, uh, let the air out of the greatest bubble of all time, which we are in, we are in the greatest bubble of all time, there's no doubt about that. Um, so, excuse me, I dropped something there. Uh, well, anyways, here we are, and uh, let's see what happens. But I believe that the only reason these markets haven't hemorrhaged and done it very quickly and popped is because I believe the plunge protection team is out there preventing it. Conspiracy on my part, folks. And remember, there's nothing wrong with conspiracies. We're finding out at this stage in our lives, uh, a lot of them are true. <laughs> and there's a lot of people, I didn't make that up with the PPT. There's a lot of people out there writing about it that's smarter than me. Uh, let's take a listen. I'm not a Wall Street Journal fan, but this is kind of cool. Uh, it's a two minute video. Uh, and it's funny, they give you, uh, you can get a free account, or, uh, uh, but they won't let you read past here, but guess what they let you do? U.S. inflation is expected to have stayed near 40-year high. <laughs> they let you listen to the whole article for free, so why, why the hell are you going to read it? Hang on one second. Let me uh, play this for you, though. This is kind of interesting. Um, U.S. inflation is expected to have stayed near 40-year high. Economists estimate CPI rose 7.2% last month, the fastest pace since 1982. As supply chain constraints, high demand drove up costs. By Gwyn Guilford. February 10, 2022, 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time. U.S. inflation is estimated to have remained at a nearly four-decade high in January as prices remained under pressure from strong consumer demand and pandemic-related supply constraints. Economists surveyed by the Wall Street Journal expect the Labor Department will report the Consumer Price Index, which measures what consumers pay, 
Now, mind you, this article came out before they uh, released the numbers this morning, and, and coincidentally, the numbers are about what I think they expected, maybe a bit higher than they were hoping. Pay for goods and services rose 7.2% in January from the same month a year ago, marking a pickup from a 7% annual rate in December. It also would be the fastest pace for inflation since February 1982 and the eighth straight month above 5%. Okay, folks, remember what I was, we've been looking at the misery chart for quite some time now for the last year, but more often, or lately more. And if we take a look at the misery index chart, I'm going to go up here. Sorry about that. Don't mean to stop the video, but uh, um, you can take a look at uh, by, uh, let's just do index by president. There we go. And we'll close that. And there you go. Uh, let's say 1980s would be the Carter period right here and misery index by president uh, you know what we're gonna get back to that in a moment because I don't oh, hold on a second let me take a look here index by year index by there we go uh, that's taking a moment all right we're gonna go down here and she was talking about since 70s this is the highest rate that's coming since oh 82 actually and let's take a look at 1982 uh, there you go the Reagan years 1587 uh, I'm not quite sure that's true, though. Take a look at the print in uh, 1981. I'm not sure where Wall Street is getting that uh, information, but it, it would seem like the highest inflation print would have came with the Carter administration. So uh, maybe the Wall Street Journal is wrong on that. Take a look at that. 20.76 in 1980, not 82, which was the Reagan administration, but uh, here nor there. Uh, that may, I'm not sure where they're getting their data from, but let's take a look at. Uh, and, and maybe it was just that she's talking about the highest print in a quarter or something like that. That could be as well. Uh, let's listen to the rest of that article. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there, but I, I wanted to make a few points here as they're talking about this. The so-called core price index, which excludes the often volatile categories of food and energy, is estimated to have risen 5.9% in January from a year. Excludes food and energy, folks. Did you gather that? Uh, isn't it convenient that, they, that the... Uh, uh, they took food and energy off the list. And I think they did that a while ago. They keep uh, changing uh, how they figure the CPI around. The truth of the matter is, I, I've read a, quite a few articles that used the uh, way that they used to formulate the CPI in the 1980s. And if we use that same formula or similar type formula that we did in the 80s, uh, the uh, CPI would probably be closer to 15% or higher right now. So again, I just kind of want to interject some of these points as they're talking. You won't hear that from the Wall Street Journal. That would be a sharper increase than December's 5.5% rise and the highest rate in nearly 40 years. On a monthly basis, the CPI is expected to have climbed a seasonally adjusted 0.4% last month, down from 0.6% in December. and. And it also, it went down a little bit less. So what she's going to say right now is that the rate of inflation is slowing, but that's not true. Uh, there's some articles out there that are saying that they've also changed the way they figured the CPI again with some adjustments from last year. Uh, uh, and, and you'll hear that in a moment here, or maybe we'll get to that. But uh, Wall Street Journal, and, and again, corporate media that, that spreads the, uh, uh, the Washington and Fed narrative uh, it's just spewing what they say. And marking a third straight month of deceleration. Bullshit. The month over month easing of inflation could be an Bullshit. early sign price pressures are starting to ease, but many Bullshit. economists think <laughs> annual inflation will increase again in February. The January number includes a once a year revision that affects go. seasonally adjusted data for the past five seasonally years. Adjusted data. The Labor Department also updated the list of goods included in the calculation, known as a spending basket, to reflect consumer habits in 2019 and 2020. There was a change right there, reflecting consumer habits 2020, 2019, I think. There's there's an article about that. Maybe we'll take a look at it. But folks, um, it came in higher than they expected, uh, without a doubt. Uh, but they're also, if they don't, didn't spin the numbers the way they have, you know, the truth of the matter is that we would certainly be far above 15% uh, in the CPI right now. You know. They have to lie to us. Uh, the ship is sinking. The Fed knows the ship is sinking. The fiat dollar has been sinking for a long time. Slowly, slowly. Uh, and how do we know this? Because we have the data that shows us. I mean, you can look at square in the eye here. Take a look at this. Uh, it's just a declining uh, market right here. Look, boom, there we go. 
So uh, this line, until this line starts going up, which I don't think we'll ever see happen again, uh, nothing is going to get better, folks. And the, the captain, the, the, which is the uh, president or the uh, government and uh, officials and the uh, Fed, they have to jawbone us because we're on a sinking ship. And they know it. They know it. They just don't want the passengers to panic. Well, uh, and you know what? You, you don't panic, folks. We're not panicking. We know this as well. We know that uh, we know the lies. We know the nonsense. We know the bullshit. We know the manipulation, uh, and we've been planning for it for a long time. Okay, so <laughs> you're, we're we're smarter than the average bear out there who uh, who absolutely just swallows the narrative. Okay, but uh, let me move along from here because oh man, I gotta get down to my store here soon. I gotta open up pretty much by myself here. Uh, let's take a look at uh, ZH here and uh, see what's going on. And uh, bar shock NATO strikes as hot as CPI in 40 years and rate, uh, rate hike odds soaring. Again, uh, my two videos this week were, uh, uh, it was gonna be way either up or down. And I believe that if the CPI number came in softer than they expected, we would have saw. You see the monkey hammering that happened? They tried, they did, they tried, look at that. They tried, and I think if the CPI number kind of sucked, this wouldn't have uh, uh, bounced back like it did. I think we would have been in a decline. I'm pretty certain of that. And the same thing with silver, oddly enough, which has the exact same line. Look at that. That's scary. Is that the gold line, the silver line, the exact same? What the hell is going on here? That is weird. Anyway, I'll get back to that maybe tomorrow or this week if it continues to happen, this little trend of it being almost exactly the same. Uh, so ZH here, uh, not too much to talk about as well. We've been talking about the CPI. So has everyone else. Uh, as far as uh, news uh, and political stuff, I've been not talking about it for a couple of days just because I've been busy and I've got a lot of things going on. Uh, but, you know, this doesn't surprise me right here at all. Uh, good for Joe. And, uh, of course, you know i got to get my little comments in. But you know what? Let's, uh, again, I really have to get out of here. i got customers to serve, and I'm not trying to uh, sneak out of you faster, uh, folks, but i got so many things going on. Um, one ounce, ten ounce. 100 ounce generic bars are the best deal out there. If you can pick them up for spot minus uh, or spot minus spot plus 350 or less, that's my suggestion. I advertise to be at MexJM and SD Bullion. For any of you listeners out there that live in South Florida, uh, I'm a brick and mortar. For you folks outside my area, remember I don't uh, I don't ship, so you got to figure out who your best local dealer is, and I recommend you find one. Keep that money local. As far as gold goes. Uh, uh, same thing. Let me just do a little back button. I think I had that yesterday. Stick with gold bars. Uh, I got a special on cruder ends right now. So for my South Florida peeps, again, if you don't live in my area, folks, I can't ship this stuff to you. Find a good local dealer. He's probably running specials as well. But I got a special on KR where I can beat the pants off of Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion. Uh, and I've got a special on one gram bars. I've got so many one gram bars right now. Uh, they got a high premium, but I tell you what, I can, I'll can i beat the pants off of Atmex Jam and SD Bullion on one gram bars as well. Uh, so uh, what, what do I think you should buy out there? Not one gram bars. I'm sorry, but if you need them, I got them. Uh, and Krugerrands, I don't even think of the best deal. Best deal uh, Krugerrands is the best deal right now in my store. Uh, better than Maples, better than Eagles, because the price point's great and it's a wonderful product, been around a long time. But even better than that is Gold Bars. I always recommend buy the cheapest product that you can from your local dealer or if you live in my area from me, and that would be one ounce Gold Bars. Probably Valcombi's, which are, where's Valcombi? I, I saw them down here somewhere, but there's a Valcombi in a nice orange holder. So Valcombi Bars are what I got right now for spot plus 75 bucks, I believe and uh, you should be able to pick them up for your local dealer as well. If you're buying quantity, this changes everything too because we do sell, uh, in quantity we sell for less, as, uh, we sell for less, uh, like they do too, and I still beat the pants off of those three big companies. And there's nothing wrong with those companies, I'm just a very competitive type guy. And your local dealer should be as well if he wants to stay in business. Uh, yesterday's video, I'm sorry everyone, um, gosh I'm not sure about my title there, I kind of was just be apologizing for being late on the show. Uh, I wasn't, you know, <laughs> apologizing for my dad being sick, but again, man, take a look at this. I mean, God, you guys are great. Really, I appreciate it, man. Good people. Uh, I am, you know, um, I am. Uh, I want to use the word blessed, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm blessed. I'm, 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 you know, I've been given a great audience out here. Uh, you folks are great. I mean, if you just look in our comment sections, almost on all our videos, everybody gets along, everybody talks with each other, and you, you guys converse with each other and uh, teach each other things and learn from each other, which is great. I think comments is a great place to uh, uh, meet people similar uh, uh, frame of mind and also to learn things. So I'd like to thank all of you, especially all of you folks uh, 
not especially, but you know, I, especially, yeah. Thanks for all you folks that, look at that, everybody was concerned about my father, Guy Foote, Sarge, William, Old Coasty, BJ, Stephen Brown, Rick Rock, Paul Shepard, VJ, Andrew Pasco, Mike Matthews, uh, every one of you, I really appreciate that. Phyllis Johnson, Herbert uh, Bradford, Mark Hall, Paul Lim, uh, and Paul Lim kind of mentioned this. Uh, my father died on March 10th when he was 84. He died in his sleep in a very big surprise. Enjoy, and Paul's right, enjoy the precious moments with your father while you still have him. Uh, sometimes I wish I had called him more often uh, or visited him more often. He was an amazingly strong man for uh, all our family. He had a wonderful funeral. 200 people telling that's wonderful, man. Uh, but, but you're right, Paul. Uh, sometimes, you know, I, my dad's still here, and I'm going to spend more time with him, more time calling him. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that. In fact, I'm going to call him here shortly, see how he's doing. Uh, but thank you, uh, folks. Uh, Y'all have really, Linda, Scott, James, uh, Ahelius Tasabalas, uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And uh, Scott, Rick Rock, Randy, Big J. Uh, I just, you know, I'm, I'm saying the names here, Wilford, uh, Hager, the whole hodler, Shepherd Heights, Silverwolf, Ameripride, Celtic Knot, Liquid, Joey, Robin Hood, Michael, Carl Saber, Michael again, <laughs> uh, D. Worm, Marie Doremus, The Scourge, Boca Stacker. Oh, Boca Stacker, you're in my dad's area. My dad's shop is Florida Currency and Coins. It's not open right now, though. Uh, Linda, uh, uh, Tree Climber, and Wel Welch Co. Services. Thank you, folks. You guys, are, again, you guys are the best. I really appreciate that. Well, I'm going to end this video right now with saying think for yourself, question authority, and you know what? Even question yourself. Is the narrative in your mind, is, is what you believe your own thoughts, or was it something that someone told you long ago that you think are your own thoughts? So question everything in life, especially authority. Hey, thanks for watching. It's Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. Uh, call me anytime between nine, uh, call me anytime, uh, 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. Again, I'm a brick and mortar in South Florida, so if you don't live in South Florida, unfortunately, folks, I can't sell you any product, but again, Thanks for listening to my videos. I hope I'm helpful as far as uh, you finding good product and maybe getting some good information that we're all sharing and learning together. And uh, that's it. Hey, thanks again. I'm going to go open my store. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.